Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald Crafting. And what I'm going to do today is another one of my cement castings out of white cement. I'm going to be using one of the fish from the coloring books that I have on my website. So if you're interested in getting a hold of any of the coloring books, they're really, really cheap. I'll leave the link for those down in the description below. And they're really useful for things like this. What I'm going to do is tape this down to the foam so it doesn't move around and use my pattern to cut out of the foam the pieces that I want to have a, as the hole and this is a much easier foam to cut through as opposed to the polystyrene that I used previously and it's important that I keep these pieces that I've cut out because I will need to put those back in in a little while. Now I have this cut out, what I need to do is mount it onto a board so that all the <laughs> cement doesn't just go running out. And as the same as I did last time, I've got a piece of cardboard and all I've done is cover it with some wide packing tape. And then that will fit on there like so, and I shall also pop the bits that I cut out in there using the hot glue gun and go around the edge like this and then stick that down onto there. Yep, that should do nicely. And then the same for this, although what I will do for this is rather than put it on the back of here, I'm going to put it onto the cardboard because this is a little bit smaller. And by putting it straight on the cardboard, it's less likely to melt it. I'll let that set up for a minute and then I'm going to pour my cement and pop some wires into the bits that I think might be a little bit more fragile. So across this tail here, I think that might be a bit fragile. A couple of bits going across here and a bit here. I've got everything mixed up now. So all I have to do is pour it in and this is about the consistency that I like to have it mixed up to. Now if you do get a little bit of leakage on this, it's nothing to really worry about. Make sure you get it everywhere that you want it. And then this is where I pop in my support. And they will kind of stay where you put them, which is great. You do get quite a nice working time with this white cement and this will be ready to probably take out the mould within about two hours I would think. And there will be some bubbles that come to the top, I'm not too worried about that. And if you want to add a little bit more to it, you can, it, that is no problem, you can add on top of this. So I'm going to leave this up to cure up now and set and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do next. This is all nicely finished now, or well not finished but nicely gone hard. It only took a couple of hours. I am releasing this foam from these edges to allow me to get it off a little bit easier because I know how heavy handed I am with things and I am likely to break something or mess it up. Cardboard should just pull off that base and there we go it has and I will put that to one side because I will definitely be using that again. Well this is the image from my colouring book that I used to make this and what I'm going to do now is go around and kind of sketch in some bits here where I want to ensure that I put in some details and they only have to be rough. And then once I've done it on that side, I will also do it on the other side while I'm carving it out. And all I'm gonna to use to carve this out with is the same tools I used before, and that's my clay tools. And I will link everything that I used today in the description below. And this is actually a really cheap hobby, and it's a really cheap way of getting some lovely sculptures in your house or to sell. I've sorted my tools out now, so what I'm going to do is go around using this one all the way around, but not too deep to start with, with this tool, and just carve out these lines that I've put in. And then once I've done this side, I will then go over and do exactly the same pattern on the other side. I've made my marks on both sides now. And as you can see, that side's a lot cleaner than that side. And what I'm going to do before I then start carving in the rest is go round, round off and improve all these edges. I'm going to take my nice blade here, go around and gently take some of this off so that I can get a rounded edge to this whole fish going both sides. And it does cut nice and easily. It's not too difficult to cut. And that way I can then finish off the rest and before I give it all a really good sanding down and make it nice and smooth and paint it up. Well, this is all tidied up now, as you can see, and I've smoothed all these edges out. It didn't really take very long at all to do. I've put some quite 
distinct marks in the tail going all the way around because I think they're quite important to be there. Now I've got all my marks in there. What I'm going to do is go through those again and give them a little bit more depth, but also round them off a little bit by using some of these tools because I want them to, to look as if they're not really sharp edges, but they're still definitely defined. Similar to how I've just done that one there, it's a little bit deeper. It's got more of a smoother base rather than a, a, a V shape, which I had kind of cut into it before when I was marking them out. And all that's achieved by just using a tool that's shaped like that. Well, it's all cleaned up now and it's ready for sanding. What I am going to do is just go through and neaten up some of these areas. I'm using a fine sandpaper to start with and then I'll go over with an even finer sandpaper after that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I do lots of different arts and crafts on here and have some fun as well. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help my videos to get out there. Well, this has all been primed now and it's ready to paint and what I'm going to do is paint it so it looks like this fish which is a copper band butterfly. This is quite iridescent and I've got no iridescent white so I'm going to make some using a little bit of satin varnish that I'm going to pour into this shot glass and this will dry clear anyway so whatever you put into it is going to look quite nice. I'm then going to put some very ultra fine white glitter into it which is quite iridescent in itself and then to tone that down a little bit I'm going to put a little bit of pearl white mica powder in it as well which will still give it as well the iridescence but it will stop it being that really really brilliant white because I don't want it to look as if it's a brilliant brilliant white and then when that dries that'll have all that lovely iridescence in it and the other colors I'm going to be using on it are some Arteza iridescent paints. I'm going to be using the dreamy lemon yellow, the fiery red and the shady orange. The first bits I'm going to paint are the white and I'm going to paint the whole thing with the white paste that I've got here because that way it's all nicely covered and once it's dry it's easy then to see where it is and also to paint over and do all the finishing touches to it. And because we've used a white primer that is what's going to show through. The other thing this will do, because it's varnish, it will really create quite a nice hard coat on here. Now look how iridescent that is. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but that is coming out really nicely iridescent. And it's a cheap, easy way to make iridescent paint if you don't have them already. Well, there we go. That's painted now both sides. So what I'm going to do now is leave that to dry up really well. I think the iridescence on that is absolutely beautiful. In fact, I did have a second thought and thought, well, maybe I shouldn't paint it any further than that. But no, I am going to, I'm committed to it, so I'm going to do it. Now this is nice and dry, I can go ahead and paint it. I've got my picture here of what I want it to look like. And to be honest, that has come out so iridescent using that varnish, glitter, and a little bit of mica powder on it. And it's also nice and hard now as well, that paint. And it's quite easy to work out what goes where. I'm going to do the whole of the top bit here yellow and this bit here, apart from the nose area, I'm also going to do yellow. Same with the fins and this tail bit, I'm going to leave a little bit white here, but then go through probably with a very light blue on the end here. A little bit of black in some places. And as you can see, this paint paints on here lovely. Well, the fish is all painted now and it's all lovely and dry. And I'm going to set it in a base like this here. And what I'm going to do is fill that with some plaster, the same plaster I made that with, up to a certain level, and that will hold on to it nice and tightly. Anyone wondering what this is that I'm using here, it is the plastic pot that comes when you order a takeaway in the UK. And I've done it upside down because I want it to be that way up, the angle going up rather than down. So that's why I cut the bottom out of it rather than do it any other way. So I've got it all mixed up now and what I'm going to do is pour it in there as gently as possible so that I'm not going to get it all over the actual fish that I've just painted because that would be really annoying. 
Now I'm going to leave that and let it cure up and go hard. The fish is all nice and set in there now. So all I need to do is to take it out. And I'm just going to do that by cutting down this pot. I should be able to take the lid, which I put back on this pot, off the bottom. See, it's come out quite nice. And it doesn't really matter that it's got that shape on it because you're not going to see the bottom anyway. I'm going to remove this lip here because I don't want it to be there. And that should easily come off just with using a knife and then going round it with a little bit of sandpaper. I'm also going to smooth off and round over this lip here. Again, using the same method, just going over it with my knife like this until I'm happy with it. I'm not gonna paint it blue or anything like that to look like the sea because it would look like the fish was jumping out of the sea and these types of fish don't really do that. I'm really pleased with how that's come out. It didn't take me long, just a few minutes to scrape those sides down and give them a bit of a sand over. I've decided that I'm gonna paint this copper because this is a copper band butterfly. And I've got some copper metallic paint. It will take probably two or three coats, although I'm actually really liking that look. Well, the fish is all completed now, and I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I actually do like the copper look base. I think that doesn't detract away from the fish, and it's not trying to be the ocean or anything like that. And as you saw in this project, this was such an easy project to do. I'm definitely gonna do some more of this type of thing because I'm really enjoying it and I think they make great gifts and I'm sure that actually they would sell quite easily and they're very, very cheap to make, cost nothing. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you've got any other ideas that you'd like me to make using this technique, I'd love to hear about that. Don't forget to boop that thumbs up, it really helps my videos to get out there and it also lets me know that you've enjoyed this project and you've found this project useful. And hit that subscribe button as well because I'm trying to grow this channel, I'd like to get it to about 10,000 subscribers if possible by about March next year. So please subscribe. And I will leave the links to everything that I've used in the description below. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye.